I was on a, a flight and I had like this mental breakdown when I found out I was supposed to get a call to see if I was supposed to come back to season three. And I like started like freaking out on the flight and crying t to my parents. I'm like, please don't let me come back to that show. It wasn't, I don't know why that is. It has nothing to do with Bunked. It has nothing to do with Disney. I absolutely lo loved every minute. I was just in a place of instability. Mm. So in a way, like, everything was as it should be, you know, had I come back for season three, I would have done it, you know, and like pulled up my bootstraps and, and did the job. But I was secretly hoping that I would be able to walk away. Nah, Kevin's here. No, okay. <laughs> That's our guest. <laughs> but we're here for now. The first 10 minutes of this episode that you love so much, so dearly, us sitting here chatting about, you just got to, were you looking on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> this is the third time we've tried this intro. Yeah, I was looking at uh, uh, Holmes on Zillow. You know, I will say we've never had to redo an intro, I don't think. Uh, I think we've restarted a couple times. But know. rarely have we ever been like, yeah, we should redo that one. Yeah, I was not feeling good. Now I got a little Red Bull going. I'm feeling a little... I have had three coffees today. You had a lot of energy today. And the last one I had, I do have a lot of energy today. The last one I had had four shots of espresso in it. Why? Did you make that yourself? I did. Well, God. you know what was funny was I woke up early, had a cup of coffee, kind of made a second one and like sipped on it a little bit, didn't really finish it. And then I went on a run a little later in the day and then just was tired before I came here. So I was like, I need a coffee. And then that one, I put a little extra in, and I'm, I want to tell I'm you one thing wired. that really, like every time I want right to think of a way to laugh, I genuinely think of you having too much pre-workout and going <laughs> to the gym and thinking about that feeling of like, <laughs> dude, I was, I was literally and pulling going, your hair out. <laughs> oh my god, because like, like ripping out my hair, and then I threw I can up. Feel that? Yeah, you threw up. Yeah, threw up violently. That, I also threw up today. I told you that on the <sighs> phone. It's insane. I just throw up a lot. I think part of it's, it sounds like, get yeah. that checked out. <laughs> yeah. uh, it sounds like it's caffeine. I mean, this one, it sounds like it's fluid related, but this one's I uh, Yeah, I don't, really I caffeine don't, related. I don't digest fluid well, actually. Do you remember when we went to Hawaii and we, Hawaii? we took 10 shots of espresso? This was before we were drinking and we were like, <laughs> yeah, also what a crazy horrible night. idea. No, dude, that's worse than drinking. I'd rather take 10 shots. I feel like it's better for my heart. 10 shots of espresso like, is like 600 milligrams of caffeine. That's stupid, dude. I mean, it's so bad for you. It's, <laughs> it's so bad. It's too. just stupid. It's like, how dumb can you be at 15 years old? Ah, oh, man. I'm not... Anyway. Um, yeah. I, how, didn't someone die from less caffeine than that? I don't know. Is that something we want to get into? I don't know. I, let's. I know. I, I can tell you something I want to get into. Tell me. Um, I have a fun question, but uh, really quickly, you wanted to thank everyone. For oh, I did. I, I did talk about this a little bit earlier. Uh, we we did a survey recently. <laughs> <laughs> the intro that we filmed. Yeah, three different yeah. Times. You guys will never see it. We did a we did a survey a couple episodes ago, um, and I say that because I don't know when this is going to air, uh, but. We had to do a survey for the show. It was mainly for, for us to know things, but it was also with the company that we work with just to get a little more information on who you guys are, what what you're looking to see. And, uh, you know, when you put something like that out there, it, it might sound stupid, but it's a little vulnerable because you're like, I hope we can get that many people to reply to it. Mm. And, like, we were kind of under the impression that it would probably take us a while to get. And they were like, yeah, even if you get, like, this number, it's, like, fine. And we were like, all right, I hope. Not to get into the details, you guys exceeded that expectation in in, in hours, in hours, and yeah. in dividends of people, and everybody was super kind and thoughtful, and it was, it was not like the the world's simplest survey. So the fact that you guys put time and effort into doing that is is really it's cool. Yeah, I took the survey after I said that, and it was not ten minutes long. It was probably like twenty, but it wasn't like a ten minute survey. It was and like a, a lot of people completed it. Yeah, everyone. And uh, I mean, the the coolest thing about that is there's some comment boxes to let us know what you liked and what you didn't like, and we really appreciate reading every single one of them. Um, a lot of them, even even the dislikes, I, I don't think any of them were, were really harsh. They were just it, it was just advice or critiques and. Um, yeah, we really appreciate you guys taking the survey, but then taking the time to tell us what you actually think of the show and what you like seeing and hearing. And 
Um, it's really cool to get those intimate answers from you guys. And I'll say, I think I can <clears throat> speak for the both of us when, when I say this, but, uh, you know, we, we used to have a podcast, obviously we worked on that and, uh, we had some, you had a podcast. Yeah. I, I had one with my old buddy. Oh. Um, but you know, we, we worked on that for a while, had some troubles production wise and kind of ended up just letting it fade away. Uh, and I think I can speak for both of us that genuinely the reason that we really wanted to do it again was because people enjoyed it. And so when you put something like this out there and, and see this and hear that people actually really care about it and that they take their time to do it, it's like, that's exactly why we do this thing, you mm -hmm. know, because it's not for us, certainly ain't for the money. No. Oh, shit. I tell you that. Um, what money? <laughs> that's my point. Um, no, but I mean, really it's, it's for the people who actually get up on Monday and watch this thing and watch the last one we did and trusted us to do this again. And, and it's fun it's crazy. to meet new people and have different conversations that, I mean, we, we had Jason here a couple of weeks ago. We had interviewed him before. I'm not sure what it was for. It might've been for another podcast, but I can't really remember. Anyway. Um, um, but it was a great conversation. Um, yeah. No one that like, you know, I feel like every time we talk to someone that we've talked to before, or someone new, we learn something every time, and it's cool to do that um, for an audience, but also just cool well, to experience that every time we have someone in here. We've also gotten like super lucky with um, companies wanting to help us out do this again too. For mm -hmm. example, Road, like the mics we use. Oh yeah, we would not have been able to do this if, without all of that and the the help behind that. It's also pretty simple now with the company like road to yeah, start I mean, your the own podcast. Yeah, I mean, mics are super affordable. Um, we set them up in maybe five minutes. Yeah. Uh, the quality is fantastic. They have switchboards. They have mics, all the cables, everything that you could possibly need to start a podcast. It's really not that hard. No. You just sit in front of a camera and talk. and You don't even need the camera. I mean, no. think about it. Like, Smartless doesn't use a camera. They're just using mics. Oh, you just sit in your closet, get yeah, a friend dude. on Zoom, get a friend in the closet with you if you'd like, you know, well, that might up get to a you. Weird. I don't know what that podcast but, is about. <laughs> Two friends in a closet yeah. on road mics. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I also yeah. use I use Road. Um, I use their lobs for the cooking show, mm -hmm. um, which have just been the best things ever. Because I am such a stickler with audio. This was my problem in film school. Was I hated film projects in film school because the audio was always terrible. We never had good audio equipment, mm -hmm. and bad audio on a project ruins the whole thing. I think it's. Arguably the most important part of a project, regardless of what it is. Oh, yeah, I mean, if it, if it sounds terrible, you don't want to hear it. That's why it's like, it. I mean, it's a terrible example, but that's why I have to be in the mood for uh, uh, foreign films, because I have to be in the mood to read. It's not going to be something I know what you focusing, mean. You know? Yeah, I have no problem with, <clears throat> I mean, it's such a stupid statement, but I have no problem with foreign films. I have no problem obviously. with foreign films. Um, <laughs> but that I it, it really it's a me thing. It's a me being a stupid person thing of like I just I don't want to read, you know? Like nope. that's always my problem. Yeah. And then I watch them and I do it and I'm like, oh, I love it, you know. But like, luckily, Rode actually translates every word that you speak <laughs> yeah, into the dude. mic. It's a new feature. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um but yeah, I mean again, thank you to a company like Rode for for helping us out. Yeah. Check situation. out these mics. They're literally like a hundred bucks and you set them up super quick and you sound fantastic. And it kind of makes you sound like you know what you're talking about when your voice is a little more crispy. And I little, bet uh, Kevin's going to love them too. Oh yeah. We're going to get them already. I think we should. I kind of want to talk some more. I want to ask you a question. All right, go ahead. Before we get to Kevin. Um, yeah, Kevin, can you go back? Who, I, I, was I was just sitting in the car today and I got a phone call from someone I'm not going to mention. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> Someone I work with, and I saw you their name work. pop up. Huh? Was it me? Because you don't work. So who was I it? I work. Um, and I, my like my heart like skipped a beat. Mm. So I was like, this person would <clears throat> never call me unless something was wrong. Oh, uh, okay. Um, everything was fine. But who who calls you and you're like, oh my god, th I th there's no way that this conversation is going to be good. Uh, or, be why, good. or like this conversations, why is this person calling me? This person yeah. never called. Like you can text back and forth with them, but like when they call you, you're like, what's, what is going on? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think we both experienced this when prior to like emails being a big deal, like working as a kid, you got the phone call from your agent or manager. That was oh, good yeah. news. That was the best thing in yeah. the world. You went on an audition. If you got that phone call, you're like, Here we booked go. it. 
Yeah, it was like you just knew. And it was always the best thing to answer that phone. So I feel like anytime I, if my agent or manager calls now, that would be my, my thought would be good, you mm-hmm. know? They don't seem to call, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I got a phone call. Still waiting on that one. If it's bad, <clears throat> I mean, this might be a stupid answer, but like, I don't know what. Like, if if American Express calls me, I'm like, tell oh, my card's gone. Yeah. Or they're like, dude, you don't have that money, so I don't know what you think you're doing. Hey, your or account Kevin just Quinn's bounced calling twice. me right now. This is bad news. Oh my god. What if he's like, I don't want to come. Well, let's go. Let's get him. Let's in get here. him here. All, All right. right. All right. Hey, you chatters and your sitters, <laughs> you guys, you crazy ones. Welcome back. I, we already did an intro. I don't even know why I'm doing that. Kevin Quinn. Kevin Quinn's here. Kevin Quinn's here. <laughs> hey, thanks, building. Kevin, for... Uh, hey. <laughs> Kevin, you know, I went like four or five years without seeing you, and now I've seen you two days in a row. <laughs> he, uh, true. He came on the old cooking show. Ah, oh, the old cooking show. We made show. saffron risotto. Yeah. Oh, I love saffron. Sounds pretty good. It's expensive as hell, man. Yeah, it's super expensive. It's like expensive. $20 for a little vial that big. Yeah. We went to this, uh, or I went to this cooking shop in, in like Oregon with my girlfriend, and we got this like little jar, and we went to the checkout counter. It was like $75. Wow. Tell you what, made like saffron and ice for like two months. And that like delicious, risotto but... was pretty good, though. Huh? It was. I was having leftovers. It's pretty good. My sister works at Lionsgate, and she was taking it to work for lunch. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wait, you, you <laughs> took the leftovers? I had some leftovers. Yeah, I yeah. Took, I gave him all of it. Yeah, oh, and then nice I gave guy. some to my yeah. sister. I don't eat risotto. Wow. Wow. Do you, would you ever do like a food truck? I would love to. That would be sick. I would love to do a food truck. Are I you think a big cooking simple. guy? No, but no. I love food. Love food. Yeah. What there, kind of food truck would you do? Oh, man, we've played around with it with uh, Eric, the dad from Good Luck Charlie. He and I have we like we love food equally, but we like our food in such different ways. Like I really like. Kind of like clean, healthier foods that are like presented really well, and he just makes like sloppy barbecue, and he makes his his barbecue so good. But like he loves like sloppy pizzas, and he just throws it on the plate, and it tastes really good. We had the idea of doing a food truck that was a combination of like both of those things. So like if you got like a steak sandwich, like you got half my version, half his version. And if you got a burger, kind of like the same deal or like tacos, like tacos in two different ways. So we've, we've played around with that idea, but food trucks aren't expensive to buy. Like you can buy a food truck for like a hundred thousand dollars. And like, if you're two people splitting that, like that's not a horrible right. investment. It's the upkeep and hiring yeah. somebody to like work it. What would you call it? And like finding and gigs. Oh yeah. yeah. Like how are you going to find a gig? Yeah. yeah. You got to find the gigs. And then you also have to find places that allow food trucks to just like park. Yeah. Like you go down to Santa Monica, I would imagine it's pretty territorial. Like it probably is tough to like get a spot, you know? Yeah. Um, but you can't just do like a metered parking situation. I don't right? think you can. I, I don't think, think you have, you have can, a permit. Yeah. I think you have to have, and you, they have to be like permanent zones. Would you bring a food truck to a, a market that it's not big yet? Like Tallahassee, Florida or something. Oh, you know, a, like a countrywide road trip food truck. That's actually a cool idea That's of cool like a documentary cool. show, yeah. like following like a food truck around the country. That's crazy. That's that that. That's a good idea. I, I think that would be a better idea would be if you like just had food poisoning in your truck and you just gave it to every and single you slowly city kill you off to. different <laughs> states. Slowly destroy yeah, we the pick state. five states to kill everybody in. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Which ones would we pick? <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we can name a couple. Um. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, I haven't seen you in forever either. I know. How yeah. long have we realistically gone without seeing each other? Probably like four years. Same same amount of time. No way. No, yeah. longer than that. Why has it been that long? I don't know. I'm why haven't you called good. me? <laughs> why, haven't, why haven't you responded to my text? It's, that I haven't it's sent? COVID plus strike equaled oh, yeah. weird time. Four years. Oh, time, yeah. Plus time. Fuck, I forgot. Like, Minus I food. feel like we just kind of, life gets in the way. Yep. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, like and also, just, I think we were working on the same network. You're going to the same events. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, you'd see each other all the time. We would probably see each other once or twice a week just from yeah. having to work, you know? And now yeah. I saw of, him at an event, like, um, two a couple months, months ago. ago. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, we were telling this story on the cooking show. And then I was I, I was with, like, an pr- executive producer friend of mine because I'm doing music now. And I was like, this guy's the funniest guy I know. <laughs> he said that in front of a group of people, and I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> the funny guy. Yeah, hey, look like, at me. I'm so funny. And okay, like, yeah, will you crack us on. a joke? Yeah, yeah, give come us on. something. What's going on? Um, so you're working on music. Yeah. That's Is that always been like a passion of yours? Is that how you got yeah. into it? 
Is that how you got into not, entertainment? That's how I got into acting. Really? really? Yeah, I never intended to be an actor. Take us on the journey, man. We're gonna we're gonna head out. So you tell us the audience <laughs> yeah. the story. <laughs> gotta go. I gotta take a shit. <laughs> He's got a shit. So yeah. we're gonna oh head God. out. Um, take us through it. I mean, take man. us take us back to Chicago. Chicago. That's where yeah. you're from? Yeah, I hear you're from Indiana. From Indiana. Yeah. My <laughs> sister used to live in Lincoln Park for like. You lived in Lincoln Park. My sister lived there. Yeah. Oh, your sister does. Yeah. Is she still there? She moved out like last year. I think that's a great part of town. Yeah, it's cute. I, she lived like right next too. to the zoo, I think. Yeah, yeah great zoo. Spelled great a little zoo. bit differently, but yeah. <laughs> I used to go to that zoo growing up as a kid. Yeah, it's. I mean, the lake is beautiful. It's a. It's a really pretty city. It was in kind of lake that cold. Just, <laughs> just goes, man. That lake goes. That that lake. <laughs> yeah. That lake. Holy cow! If it's like the king of lakes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. You want to sit there and just stare and be depressed. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like that's where you want to sit and stare. So you're sitting and staring in Chicago, and you're like, I want to make some music. Come on. Yeah. Hard Where are you in Chicago? Bunch. I was 15. I was going to school in the north suburbs, and I had strep throat one day. And I thought, this would be a perfect opportunity for me to audition <laughs> for American Idol. Yes. <laughs> so I saw an ad on Facebook with Nicki Minaj and her plump body. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? Her... Uh, lovely figure. <laughs> so what? you're on Facebook. Is this what you would say? Yes. Okay. And okay. I was scrolling Facebook. I saw Nikki, an ad of Nicki Minaj, and she was like smiling or whatever. And I was immediately <laughs> struck by her. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Nikki and her full, yeah. and her beautiful curves. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do have a girlfriend, but she'll find this funny when she hears <laughs> it. Um, no, and then I, I, you know, I decided to audition for American Idol. And um, I sent in a tape on, at the time it was Photo Booth. I just recorded oh, yeah. like a 15 second, 20 no second way. video of me. Yeah. That's cool. Of me singing. And um, didn't think anything of it. And then lo and behold, like two weeks later, I got a, my, I think it was, oh yeah, I got a call from a producer in Long Beach on the show. And she was like, hey, are you Kevin Quinn? I was like, um, yeah. I was like 15, <laughs> right? She's like, oh, yeah, saw- what? <laughs> the fuck do you want, <laughs> woman? You jerk? What? what? I'm freaking studying, man. You should be. <laughs> I'm 15. <laughs> Why are you not going through my team? <laughs> I have reps. <laughs> I gotta go to the park later, man. Come on. Lay off. What? I'm gonna be in Lincoln Park later. All right, great bit. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so she calls. Yeah, and she's like, she's like, <laughs> She's like, we want you to come to Long Beach and audition for this show. Yeah, that's a hell of a try. <laughs> At that hour? <laughs> this is what they said in the survey. They're like, they always go into these stupid bits. I'm like, I'll just I'm sitting here doing this thing of like, oh yeah, I want to go to fucking Long Beach, man, to start my life. But no, Long Beach is cool. Long Beach is yeah, cool what a stupid bit is that like she calls you and you're in Chicago and you're like, oh my God, the traffic to and get to Long Beach right now is going to be and terrible. Then, and then I was like, I hate Long Beach. God, it sucks. There's nothing to do. This reception's terrible. Let me go get my mom. Can you bring me to LA? You're and then she was like, at 15, dude. Yeah, and then she was like, yeah, we'll fly you out and everything. And she was like, we're flying you nonstop on JetBlue Airlines. So I was like, JetBlue? Jet <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you get the phone call. Yeah, we do have to stay on track. Yeah, we have to try. <laughs> the comments were like, by the way, this episode is sponsored by JetBlue Airlines. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much. JetBlue, very easy, fast service online. Check it out. Okay, so right. you're on the phone. Walk us through it. What's that phone call? She's Basically, flying out I, to Long I Beach. Yelled upstairs to my mom. I was like, "Mom, <laughs> American Idol's on the phone." <laughs> and she's like, "Hang up." <laughs> she actually said that. Did, Did she, she really? Like, yeah. <laughs> she's okay. Was she like, "Oh, I don't want you to do that," or was or she, she like, it was "No, a it's scam. a scam." I think she, she thought it was a scam. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> mom, what's your routing number? Seriously. Mom, do you remember your maiden name? They're asking. <laughs> oh God! And she's like, "No, uh, who's your the father?" Nikki Minaj. I have dementia. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So and she then, says, "Hang up," and then she's like, "No, no, like don't hang up. This is real. I'm actually a producer." I was like, "Oh, okay." And then she's like, "We'd love to have you come in and audition in person for the celebrity judges." So blah blah blah. Fast forward, I head down to Long Beach <laughs> to the Queen Mary, the <laughs> big <laughs> ship, yep, yeah. where they were holding auditions. And I was like, I made the decision to sing this song that I was practicing with my jazz vocal teacher. 
It was like some old the oldie but goodie Ray Charles song. I don't know why I picked it. <laughs> Horrible choice. <laughs> That's a pretty crazy. bold, bold choice. Because I even I remember auditioning, and this part didn't make the show. I remember auditioning, and then Nicki Minaj, like everyone was super supportive and great. Like Randy Jackson was like, he was like, what the mighty Quinn? Like he loved it, right? Keith Urban, he's like super nice guy. Super, like you know, you got a great voice. Mariah Carey, super nice, um, very supportive. And then Nicki Minaj was like, well, you didn't do any runs. <laughs> what? She, what did you do? I just spat everywhere. <laughs> she, what did you do, a run? Like, you didn't do any runs or anything. Oh, man. Like vocal runs. Okay. Did you tell her, like, you're the reason that I'm auditioning for this show. <laughs> and you're going to make me run out of here. And then I, but I was, like, so happy to be there. I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sure didn't, miss. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I dropped the ball, huh? How about that Queen Mary? <laughs> Okay. Are there any food trucks around here? <laughs> oh damn. Okay. I don't want to be here. There's so, no way we make it through this. Oh god, that's funny. <laughs> so, so you didn't do any runs? No, didn't do any runs. <laughs> Just, she gave you the runs though. But actually. then I yeah, did of fast forward to I got on the show. I got the golden ticket. And then when I got eliminated, I actually did ask if there were food trucks. I asked the producer if there were any food trucks. What? We were staying at the Woodland Hills Marriott. That's where they were filming the episode. Yeah. And then I asked wow. the the producer, I was like, you know, I just got eliminated. Do you have any food trucks around here? And I, I don't know if she found any, but I'm I more surprised that, that you went to Long Beach instead of, don't they do like a nationwide tour and like have different they cities? They did. The only thing is I submitted my tape late. So that was the last in-person audition city. So they had to fly me out because I think they were in Chicago earlier for the season, oh. but I submitted my tape late online. Why uh, was it in Long Beach? I don't know. That is mm. such a random place for the tape. Yeah. But it it led to an acting career. How 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 did you go from that? Yeah, what's that transition? Acting? Someone like you got eliminated. You went you look looking for a I, food truck. I went back to Chicago and then I started talking to this talent agent in Chicago. Who I don't know if he like saw American Idol or something, or that I was just kind of gaining buzz because like oh this local Chicago kid was on the show and made it pretty far. Um, but he like reached out. Or I can't remember if he reached out or if it was through a mutual friend or something, but I got connected with him nonetheless. And he asked me to audition for this his agency. I accepted representation and immediately started going out on auditions in, in theater. Mm -hmm. Again, my plan was when I submitted that audition for American Idol, I was like, you know, I'm- I'm gonna be a singer. I wanna be a singer, yeah. So the theater auditions like strictly plays or like musicals? Mostly plays. Like, yeah. I mean, I like some musicals here and there, but I remember my first gig was at Steppenwolf Theater Company. Which, um, you ever seen Forrest Gump? Yep. You know, um, Lieutenant Dan, yeah. Harry yeah. Sinise? So that's his theater. He owns it. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. um, he started it like back in the 90s, just out of a basement in Chicago. And it's now it's like this huge venue wow. in Chicago. But that was my first gig. Uh, it was William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Nice. And then I did, that led to another gig at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater at Navy Pier. Um, you know, like that pier with the big Ferris mm -hmm. wheel. There's like, there's like a theater there and I, I did a gig there. The pay was terrible though. Really? I, yeah. I mean, like in retrospect, like <laughs> all three of us have worked, you know, in television. So like, we know what the weekly rate usually is. Mm -hmm. Right. And mind you, we were paid low compared to like network television. Oh my God. Like, yeah. I mean, I, we were paid like a third of what yeah. people... Breaking into the you guys know Nolan paid. Gould. You guys got paid? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, you know Nolan. We, well, yeah, I saw you at Nolan's house. Yeah. We know I know Nolan. Nolan. Yeah, like I, know Nolan I mean, he made forever. ten times what we made. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. He he said it perfectly. He was like, if you, he once said like, if you're on Disney, you get all the exposure to all the fans, but if you're on network, you get all the money. Yeah. yeah. But like, if you know, for us, we don't get the money. For him, he doesn't get the kind of fan base of like the young kids and stuff. Yeah. This is part for the course. So like, yes, we were making good money compared to like what I was making in theater, but it was still low compared to like Hollywood and t the television mm, sure. industry. <laughs> but when I say low pay, like my pay at the theater was, I'm pretty sure like $300 a week Oh, wow. holy for crap. like 52 hours of work. Oh my God. Yeah. It That's was insane. It was like a three hour show and I did eight of them every week and I only made 300 bucks. Yeah. Wow, and that, that, that was like the lead cast too, like the 
I did was you like have a, a good time? Character. I did. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking about the money. I was just a kid in school going to yeah. high school. Um, so then like I started auditioning when I had built up my resume a little bit, I started auditioning for like local, uh, television and, and films that would come into town in Chicago, like the stuff that would film there, like, you know, the Chicago med, Chicago PD, all that, um, shameless would come into town every once in a while. Mm. So, so I did based an episode. in Chicago, right? That show? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So oh, I did yeah. an episode of that and then I did an episode of Chicago PD and, and then by that point I, I kind of exhausted the Chicago market at that point because yeah. there weren't a lot of TV shows filming in Chicago. Now, even now, I think there are more filming like mm -hmm. throughout the United States. But at that time, 10 years ago, like there, there wasn't a lot. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, I'm kind of done here in Chicago, you know? Um, and once you're on that show, you can't come back because you're in the universe yep. of like yeah, the, yeah. the Chicago Med or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm kind of done here. I'm going to test my luck in L.A., so I moved out, I graduated a semester early and I had been anticipating that because I took chemistry over the summer to get my credits early. And I moved out to LA and I got here uh, and my first audition was for <coughs> Adventures in Babysitting, which was a Disney Channel original movie. And that was the first audition that I got since moving out here. And I got that probably a week after I moved out and I booked it. Yeah. I remember that. It took me a was week. It a, it was it a movie or a show? It was, it a, was movie. a movie. I, who was in that? Sabrina. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But I was expecting to and be Sophia there. And Carson, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was expecting to be in LA and then like not booking anything for like three months. I had an Airbnb booked for three months and it was paid and everything. And I was like, realistically, do I think I'm going to book during pilot season? No. Yeah. I was intending to go to college. I had like already done applications. I'd gotten into some <clears> schools. <throat> And I was like, I'm just going to do this for fun because I worked hard during summer school and see what happens. Yeah, why not? But realistically, like, I'm not expecting to get a job. So I booked this Airbnb for three months and was intending to go to college, like, back in Chicago after that was done. Lo and behold, I booked this gig within a week of getting there. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is, like, really crazy. And so I'm on a plane to Vancouver. I'm filming there for, you know, uh, I think, like, a month or two. Wasting and all that. Res uh, reservation money those weeks well, that's at the, the Airbnb, thing, right? yeah. The, you the paid for money it, that yeah. I was making on the film was feeding the Airbnb. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because I had it booked, so like, <laughs> well, I'm not really like profiting, but but it kept me like in LA, so that if I wanted to come back, I could go back to the Airbnb, yeah. which was fine. It was another thing to put on my resume, but that led to uh, Judy Taylor, who we all know. Yeah. Um, I guess she had been watching dailies of that movie. And I don't know. She was just like, oh, who's this kid? You know, but she invited me to a screen test to this show called Summer Camp. And I'd been in Vancouver for like, you know, maybe four weeks at that point. She's like, we'll fly it down and then we'll send you back up to finish filming. I was like, okay. So I head down. I screen test along with uh, six other guys. Um I can't remember who they all were. I know one was Emery Kelly. Uh -huh. um, he was invited to screen test. Nice guy. Um, this other guy, Reed Deming or something? Oh, I, I know that name. I think he's an actor. Good I don't memory. remember, though. Well, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. I would. <laughs> he was at the screen he's test? He's actually not an actor. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They were like, everybody was like, why is this guy here? <laughs> guy just owns a food truck Who invited outside. the chef? <laughs> So, so you're, you you went is. to the old 21st floor to do some screen testing. That's right. And, <clears throat> yep. Um, I was super nervous. Yeah, of course. You went through a screen test, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of nerve wracking. Yeah, dude. I mean, I I screen tested for Good Luck Charlie, good. and then um, we did when we did Pants on Fire, which I also shot up in Vancouver. Um, I think like right around the time that you guys did. Oh, really? I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but. I screen tested for that. What was funny was it was me, TJ, Karin, and Cameron. The four of us were all going out. Those are the only people that were going out for this specific thing. So it was the four of us testing for it. Cameron Boyce? And, yeah. And so for some reason, they just wanted to like interchange the four of us. And it was kind of a strange experience because we were all working and like we're all friends. So it was like, 
well, two people aren't going to get this, you know? And like, I don't know who the two people are going to be. And it ended up being me and TJ, but it worked out really well for Cameron because that day <clears throat> he met Kenny Ortega up on mm, the 21st floor. There you go. So then he ended up going and doing Descendants. And so I yeah. worked um, Bro, I miss him all mu the time. Much better than... Yeah, uh, he's such a great guy. Oh, he's the best, yeah. man. So you remember nice. we were at Nolan's house two days before that happened. Yeah, I saw him like... We the, were talking to him, Yep, all three of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's so the like best. the day before. He was making a lot of music with uh, Troy, my roommate at the time. Oh, so, tree? Yeah. Yeah. You know I've, Troy? I I've, I've met him, I believe. Yeah. You can you know everybody's last name. You're good with last names. You must be all good right. with names. I'm but for real, I miss I miss him all the time. I yeah. think about him all the time. Such a great kid. Yeah. Yeah. Too young. But Yeah. So on a lighter note. Yeah. Um <clears throat> where did that lead to? Well you yeah, did so the I test. screen tested. Yeah. And then I got the part 10 days later because, you know, they wait to, like the full 10 days to get yeah. the call. And why did they do that again? I don't really I don't know, know why. I, I don't know. I feel like it's just to just put to you on edge. Just with your brain. Yeah. Just or to make just you be feel absolutely like... sure that they're making the right decision, you know? I truly believe they I know the they, minute you that, leave that's that That's what I yeah. think, yeah. too. No, I think, I think they do it to make sure that you think it's a big opportunity and then they can pay you less. I mean, yeah. not really, but probably. But well, maybe. But maybe yeah, a little bit. But definitely, Possibly. right? So um, you screen test for bunked. Yeah. And then that led to me moving to LA full time. And yeah. that's where I met you guys. Yep. And kind of became <clears throat> part of the world of, you know, Disney Channel and uh, my tenure there with all of you. Um, and then, you know, that show, which, by the way, is still on the air. Isn't that crazy? Can you believe that? It just keeps going. I don't understand that. Why? I think it's the longest running Disney show ever. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. How is it still on the air? Well, they totally like rebranded it, right? It's not even the same show. Mm -hmm. Is it about the had, same like, three thing? New cast. I haven't watched it in Isn't years. Isn't Miranda still on it? She is. She's so, the only one still on it. Right? How long were you on it? Two years. And then they changed it? Mm-hmm. And they changed it again after that, right? Yeah. And then so I they think they changed one. it again. So are they it doesn't even have the same title anymore. Huh? Is it like season seven or eight? Yeah. It's Something it's like this that. Good Luck Charlie producers. It is Aaron that? Who? Aaron something Dunlap? He wasn't on Good Luck Charlie, no. Who was sure. It? Are you thinking of Phil Baker? Well, it Maybe. doesn't have to be the creator. It is could it be one Aaron of the producers. Dunlap? Why I mean, is like that Disney name sticking actually? out? Aaron no, Dunlap. It could be like one of the other producers that's not Phil Baker. Like you guys had other producers. No, I know. I'm just, I, I don't know Aaron uh, Dunlop, I so, she must have been a writer on it or something. I yeah. was told it was a writer from Good Luck Erica Charlie. Castle. She writes on that show and directs on it all the time. She was a writer on Good Luck Maybe. Charlie. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly, like, I haven't seen the show since I left it, actually. I, I would occasionally tune into some of the episodes that I was in, but yeah. I haven't watched it since You're a then. selfish lover like that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that network looks like right now. Couldn't tell you. No. no. Couldn't tell you at all. I know like a couple shows <laughs> that came around after we stopped working on the, the channel, and I know I know like one or two that are still running like that, and I think Raven's Home is even off now, isn't it? Well, we had such a weird like... Wizards is coming back on, I think. We had such a weird way of ending our our time on that, on that network because, uh, you know, we worked... We both of us did three shows for them, and then the third show we we were doing together, uh, we were all under the impression it was just going to keep going. It was going to come right back, and like we went away for like what we thought was like a winter break kind of vibe. Like we thought we were going to get our back nine, yeah, and uh, just never got a phone call again. Really? What did did you think you were doing a season three, or did you know at the end of season two, like oh this is it? Um. I I wasn't really thinking about it like during season two, like, oh, when this is done, that's it. Mm. I, I wasn't really thinking if whether or not like I was cared to be in season three. To be honest, you guys, I uh, was kind of – I was going through some personal stuff that I was kind of hoping I would get off the show. Yeah. That well, was another thing, which I've opened up about a little bit with my mental health struggles, but I was I was not happy towards the end of season two of Bunked. I was very, I was struggling big time. So mm. I, I remember I just had like this mental breakdown and I told my parents, I was on a, a flight and I had like this mental breakdown when I found out I was supposed to get a call to see if I was supposed to come back to season three. And I like started like freaking out on the flight and crying t to my parents. I'm like, please don't let me come back to that show. 
It wasn't, I don't know why that is. It has nothing to do with Bunked. It has nothing to do with Disney. I absolutely lo loved every minute. I was just in a place of instability. Mm. So in a way, like everything was as it should be, you know, had I come back for season three, I would have done it, you know, and like pulled up my bootstraps and, and did the job. But I was secretly hoping that I would be able to walk away. Mm. Um, so I wasn't, to answer your question, like I wasn't really thinking like, you know, about whether or not it was going to be in season three. I was just kind of hoping that it would not bit. work out for in your favor. A little yeah. bit. Do you feel comfortable sharing any of the insights into like what was going on? Yeah. Or Absolutely. Like, especially during that time? Yeah. And I appreciate you asking. Uh, for a long time, I, I was pretty quiet about it. I didn't even tell people at Disney what I was going through. Um, but I... <laughs> Around the time that I was wrapping up season two, I started getting these like really emotionally dysregulated mood swings is the best way I can describe it, where I would like cry one minute and then like feel like super on top of the world and like laughing hysterically and then cry and like just super like really like weird mood delusions swings. Delusions of grandeur type of mood swings or like? No, more just like lacking emotional regulation. Okay. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I went to, I, what happened after that? Um, I got to a point where I, something must have happened, but I, I remember I went into psychosis, which if psychosis for like people who don't know is like essentially like a psychotic episode where there's a break in like your reality. Um, kind of like a, a, a mushroom trip without mm. the drugs. So you just sort of like are disconnected from reality um, and you're not, like you may hallucinate. I remember hallucinating a lot of stuff. Like I'd be laying in bed at night and I'd hear like gunshots and like people fighting in the room next door. And I was like, what the fuck? Like um, just like weird psychotic stuff like that. And so I ended up... We thought it was what was bipolar disorder, which that usually happens during these like manic episodes where you might start to like hallucinate and stuff or like go into psychosis. Mm -hmm. So I was given a false, di what in retrospect was a false diagnosis and I went to UCLA hospital. I was hospitalized for a week. They put me on some medication. The medication really helped. And you know, before you knew it, I was back at it Everything was fine. I was out of psychosis. It wasn't a big deal. It was like that week hospitalization. I was good to go. Um, and that lasted for like four years. So I was 19 when that happened. And so 20, 21, 22, 20. Yeah, somewhere around like 22, 23, I started getting like, I think it was I, I quit my medicine cold turkey because I was switching on to a new one with my doctor and it didn't go well. Oh, yeah. That's a really, right. really tough thing to do. It, yeah. It was yeah. a mistake. And so I kind of like went back into that place, mm -hmm. and, but it was a little different this time. And I started having that emotional dysregulation and stuff. And and my girlfriend noticed it. I was on tour actually. I was uh, touring the country, playing my music with a couple other bands. And so I was living on a bus for three months. And I would, I just remember like, you know, I'd come back to the bus every night and I'd like have these horrible episodes and I'd try to like hide it from my peers and stuff. It was really bizarre. Um, but I, I got back to LA and within three days that I gotten back, like my, my girlfriend started noticing something was wrong. She's like, Hey, I'm going to take you to the hospital again. And so I went and then I spent another week at UCLA, UCLA hospital. Um, and they put me on some more meds, ran some tests. Um, and they said, okay, we think we know what's going on with you but we don't think we can treat it here. I was like, what do you mean you can't treat it here? It's a hospital. I think I told this story on the cooking show too. Um, and they were like, you're gonna have to go to a residential rehab facility or a mental health treatment center for this because it's a little more complex and it requires more intensive therapy more than what we can offer at a hospital. Mm. I was like, you've gotta be kidding me. You know, I just spent three months on the road. Now I gotta go spend a month in Arizona and like away from my friends and family. and. I just got back, this sucks, right? So I go and um, 
I, I do like this intensive therapy program. I do a lot of work on myself. Um, I, I, that's really the best way I can describe it. I mean, it was, it, it was a lot more intense than that. And like some of the stuff was too intense, like to, um, I think to put on, to, to share on a podcast, <laughs> like, yeah. which is fine, you know? Um, but I mean, for context, like I was in there with like, you know, heroin addicts and mm. meth addicts and, uh, you know, people who had been in and out of prison. Like, it's not a pretty place to be in, in a place like that. And you're, you have to be in your lowest low to be there. And that's where I was. Um, but I, I had composure and I, I kept myself like together and I got the help that I needed that by the time the 30 days was over, I was like good as new back to my old self. And they, they told me like, Hey, you know, here are your discharge instructions. You have borderline personality disorder. Um, you know, we're going to set up a treatment team with you back in LA. Do you feel good? This is without medication. With medication. This is with medication. Yeah, there's okay. a psychiatric like medication aspect mm -hmm. of treatment, but they pair that with intensive therapy and okay. you can only get that in a, like a rehab setting. Hmm. So. And you know, there's all kinds of people there. It's not just meth heads or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, by that point, I'm, I don't drink. So I haven't, I hadn't had a drink in, in three years by that point. So, you know, I never had a drug or alcohol problem. I was just there because I had some mental health issues, mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine, you know? So, um, but I got back to LA. I did another month and a half of another program. And then I did a 13 month, uh, like, uh, therapy program that was catered specifically towards people struggling with uh, borderline personality disorder, BPD, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I can understand how my treatment team misdiagnosed it as bipolar, but it's, it's different than that. Um, it has a lot to do with like BPD is, is essentially when you have a difficulty um, with your identity and how you relate to other people and an unstable self-image to the point that you are, have a difficult time functioning in everyday life. It's mm. very complex, very hard to explain, uh, but it's a profound and intense mental health disorder. It might be the like the worst mental health disorder you can get. Um, well, because I mean, like it's a lack a lack of stability, and especially in something like identity is so important to yeah. being human. Yeah, that I mean, like if you're deprived of one of your most basic needs, it's that's exactly what it is. It's yeah. like your basic ego, right? Like when I was struggling with the symptoms, it's called this symptom called splitting in BPD where like you come in and out of your identity. So like I would occasionally find myself splitting and like, um, I would, I would like forget certain parts of myself. Like I would have to remember like, my name's Kevin. I'm at the time I was, I'm 24 years old. I'm, I, um, enjoy spending time with my dog. Just simple things about mm -hmm. your identity that you take for granted when you're a healthy human being it gets fragmented and and when you're struggling with BPD it's more like well what's my name like is that really a name that fits me you know do i do i what kind of food do i like uh, what are my values am I, am i compassionate am i am i nice am i you know a good person am i a bad person i don't know am i uh, do I like walking my dog i don't so you see what i mean like constant thoughts like that constant going thoughts your of head, like yeah. of of unsure of your own identity restlessness yes and yeah, yeah yeah and it gets to a point where you it starts affecting your ability to like make decisions or like be productive and get work done and that's when you need to get treatment um so it's very complex but once you treat it it's it actually can go into remission which is where i am now so whereas with bipolar disorder it's a lifelong thing and you need medication throughout your whole life to treat it with BPD, once you get the treatment and do the intensive therapy, go to rehab, get it mm -hmm. done, you're way more likely to like it will go away within ten years for good, which is great. Is it, it yeah. like it, is it through medication too, or is it like both? Kind of like yeah. Meaning? Okay. Yeah, it's through medication and and uh, psychotherapy, but for me, like I'm in a place of now being in remission for the most part, but it's mm -hmm. only because I have uh, great treatment, um, a lot of medications. I take four of them. But if I go off my medications, I would probably end up back at rehab, which yep. sucks. Like you see me now here, I'm functional, I'm healthy. That's because I'm being treated right now. Mm. But if I were to stop cold turkey again, then I would start splitting. My identity would become fragmented again, and I'd probably 
be back to where I was. So like, do you know Pete Davidson? Mm -hmm. He has BPD. Mm. And like, uh, there are other people who have, it's a very stigmatized disorder and misunderstood. And I wish it weren't because it's really not a big deal once it's treated. But I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. I know Pete Davidson. Uh, Has your girlfriend been through, uh, like, you've been with her for, like, years, right? Yeah, she's seen me through it all, man. I mean, it, talk it's about, cool like. to have someone, like, alongside oh, you with your journey. And, like, that's. Holy cow. I couldn't, I could not have gotten luckier. Like, she literally flew out on the plane with me just to drop me off in Arizona and flew back, the, like, the same night. It's, or, no, she stayed in a hotel alone for a night and then flew out the next morning. Like, she's such a trooper. She drove me to the hospital. She knows exactly what my symptoms are. Like, she's been with me long enough that if I start, like, getting to a place where I'm struggling with my identity, she's like, Kevin, you're having symptoms again. She's like, you know, rubs my back, like, just calms me down. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, it's awesome. fuck, it's incredible. Man. Yeah. Really? I, you couldn't ask for a better partner. Or I couldn't. Can I ask, so when you switched your medication... And you went off of the other one, cold turkey, and that's what kind of sent you into going to rehab and put you in, in that process. Is there a part of you that's kind of like, well, I'm happy that that happened because it sent me on like to knowing exactly what the actual treatment was? Because at the time, if if I'm wrong, correct me, but it seemed like you were saying the the diagnosis was bipolar. But then, like when you switched. Then you had to go to rehab and realize that it was something completely different. So it's yeah. almost like, is there a part of you that's a little grateful that that process happened because that led you to be able to be where you are now? So grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, I it was the worst thing that ever happened to me, but I ended up being the best. More importantly, yep, yeah. it was the best thing. Like I have literally never been healthier and happier than after I got treatment for the yeah. BPD, which is fucking great. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So I'm lucky because there's also people out there who don't ever get treated. And they have no idea what's going on. They don't. Yeah. And it's notoriously difficult to treat BPD. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to get treated. Like they're very reluctant and they like don't want to accept that they have a problem. And so they end up like wreaking havoc in their lives and destroying relationships and friendships and making horrible decisions and, and switching careers all the time. They're very unstable people. But they don't have to be, is my point. You know? Yeah. So is that something you talk about? Like uh, he said, you have a podcast. I have not checked it out yeah. yet. But is it this is something you talk about with like your audience, your guests? It is. And, I appreciate you asking. It, yeah. It's a it is a mental health podcast, and it was inspired by my journey in rehab. Um, so we talk about like specifically mental health related uh, subjects to mm -hmm. just sort of destigmatize it. And um, I've become very passionate about the space of mental health. Just because of what I've been through. Um, so, you know, actually equally as passionate about that as like what I'm doing in my acting and my music career. It's like, it's sort of just complemented my life in this really profound way where I feel like, I feel compelled to make a difference um, having like successfully been treated. And like, if I can help other people potentially get the treatment that mm -hmm. they need, that would be very fulfilling to me as a human being. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. What's the percentage of the population that like presumably has something BPD borderline or like related? Um, it's higher than you would think. Mm. And yeah, although the number seems low, it's pretty high if it's the general population. It's I would guess it's about like 1%. That's really high. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, really yeah, that's a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. So, I mean, that's still one out of every hundred people. Yeah. The majority is probably, and it's probably underreported because a sure. lot of people don't, you don't actually even know. know. No, Those exactly. are people that are diagnosed, presumably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's also the people who don't know, but then there's also the people who are, who are misdiagnosed. It seems like it was easy for people to misdiagnose you in yes. that process. It's, it's too. very commonly misdiagnosed. It's just yeah. really hard. It's, it's, I mean, specifically that condition, but I mean, just mental health in general, you can't see it. You can't you see can. it right away unless you're looking for signs or like if you're your girlfriend, you, she knows you inside and out. So she's obviously going to see when something's going on, when something's different. But if you don't have that, I mean, it's like having, I, the other day, like, and I saw like a TikTok or reel or something with like a guy who has schizophrenia and he has a dog that like will help him with hallucinations. Mm -hmm. And if he sees something in like the other room where he hears a noise, he'll like point or ask his dog like, hey, what's that? And if the dog doesn't react, then he knows that he's hallucinating. Wow. So like not everyone's going to have access. Yeah, it's amazing. Like not everyone's going to have access to those resources. Right. And that's a tough thing about mental even health. Even something like as severe as schizophrenia, and it is severe. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. But even that's treatable. Yeah. 
Like there, there are medications in today's, you know, world that like are are designed to treat these things. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. And thank you very much for sharing. Oh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you guys listening and and being non judgmental. It's that's no. what it's all about, and I appreciate it. Yeah, go check out his uh, podcast if you're interested Thanks, in, in learning more about mental health and destigmatizing it. It's uh, it's it's really sad that it's taken us this long to I feel like really talk about it and and try to figure things out. But yeah, thanks for thanks for doing that. The outreach too is super important. So yeah, I think it's cool for people to listen to this too and and know that you've gone through something like that and be able to if if someone's out there able to relate to you, you know, it's yeah. cool that we can Thank you, be a part of that. Um, to, to, before we let you go, I want to wrap it up by asking you kind of about like what, what's going on with music right now. Yeah. I know music. You just oh yeah. Acting, some music. Acting. Um, um, so I did release an album. Yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't listen, but I think January. So it's, it's been out a couple months now, but I'm really stoked about it. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely a risk in terms of like the, compared to the last project I put out, uh, a couple years ago, this one is a bit more mature uh mature sounding it's a bit more melancholy and sad because of the kind of heavy stuff i've been through mm. but at the same time it's still fun i still wanted it to be fun and en- excuse me enjoyable uh for listeners and it is uh, but it was definitely a risk um it's still if you're if you're a young person like you're gonna love the album yeah like is it the kind of album that will appeal to like my grandpa. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we have any grandpas I, listening to this show. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't think you're good, dude. You're preaching the right audience. What if I was Perfect. just like, yeah, I, don't, dude, I, I sorry, wouldn't man. plug it on this show, dude. That's kind of our main dude, demo. we're huge with gills, grandmas. <laughs> dude, I, I don't think I did one project that my grandparents watched. <laughs> so, you guys you're only have grandpas listening to this show. Dude, honestly, like, would would be I would do a comedy tour. I would do a podcast oh my tour God. for the grandpas. Could if you they imagine were out doing there. like live do podcast tour of just just, just grandpas, grandpas in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> or touring in general. Any any type of touring, comedy, stand up, music. Yeah, it's just grandpas. Anything just grandpas. What? Wait, Wait, what, I is can't what if that's Louder. what our play is? Huh? You remember we were talking about doing a play? It's what if we grandpa? play grandfathers? Oh. Like we play each other's grandparents? Or what? we're just like an uh, like <laughs> we are grandparents. We are, yeah. We're like young actors playing grandparents. Like, hey, if we wrote a play, would you be in it? Sure. Man, yeah, we're thinking about doing yeah. a play. We'll a play? It. Yeah. 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 Just put it up yeah, in the back I mean, box I, or something. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to do a play. I've always wanted to do a play. I think it'd be so fun. I've n- I never did any. I played Charlie Brown in my kindergarten play. That's really surprising to me that you crushed it. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you did. I'm gonna be honest with you. I killed. I'm that. I'm very surprised though that you haven't done more theater. I was recast in my school play. So well, I didn't have a how chance. is it that you guys ended up in as actors and you didn't really do much theater? I, I don't know. I started out in commercials. That's so interesting. Yeah, to I did me. too. Yeah, it's like my first. Then we need to get you both in a play. Yeah, let's write it. I mean, but I might be bad. It's all right. I could be really bad. I, I, I genuinely it forever, I, could be me? <laughs> I think theater is all about commitment. I think if you yeah, get up on a stage, is. you're not nervous. You can. You really... guys know it's like it's multicam. Yeah, it it's is a lot thing. like multicam. You just don't yeah. get another take. Yeah, that would be my tough part because I'm so used to like flubbing a line and then just immediately saying the line again and going, "Yeah, yeah. the editor will cut around that." Yeah, I just talk so fast that I, I feel like if I was on stage, I have to shut up, to slow it down, make sure I don't stutter or like step over my own words. You yeah. know. But yeah, the, the, I, that's why the we're going into rehearsals next week. Do you ever have a dream <laughs> where like you're on stage and you can't remember your line, like a stress dream? Oh yeah, I have those dreams every once in a while, where I'm like in a play and the lights on me, and and then I hear I've like had, a cough in the audience. <laughs> 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 Boom! I've had that where I'm like, <laughs> get off the stage. <laughs> that's the grandpa. This guy audience. can't remember yeah. his can't line. You know shit. <laughs> Where did I park my car? You can tell this guy's from Multicam. So stupid. <laughs> Who the fuck is he? Where am I? <laughs> so dumb. Uh, it's cool. Where did I get to this black box on Santa Monica Boulevard? <laughs> But are are you still doing just music now? Or are you are you want to do the acting thing or like? Oh yeah, I'm I'm doing that too. Okay, good. Yeah, still keeping up. It, it's been a while since I shot a project though. My last one was a film with J.K. Simmons uh, two years ago now, and it's coming out in May. Finally, I hate Finally, when they do that. Right? Well, the yeah. damn strike. Why does that happen? 
strike. Hey, let's shoot a movie and release it in eight years. (laughs) Yeah. I did. I'm still waiting on one I did when I was six. <laughs> I bro, wow. I'm still waiting on one that I did like 12 years ago. <laughs> what? Yeah. And what bothers me the most is it says post production on IMDb. Yeah. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> They're not even done. I even tried to proactively change it to production unknown, and then they switched it back. Yeah, they were like, "No, we're still in post." <laughs> this editing I, process is a bitch. I hate IMDb. Oh, I hate. It. Really, you think so? Yeah. No, I hate it because you can't make any changes. No, dude, and just like I don't know who changes my IMDb. To be honest with you, I like I don't know if my mom has production. a login or if somebody else your has mom. a login. I, I couldn't tell you. It's like Wikipedia. For your actors. mom is the only one running your. Yeah, dude, she's just oh, roasting cool. I me ate on a burrito there. for lunch this week. I didn't know I fucking did that. Great, I'm glad that's up there. Good. <laughs> There's Piss so many. I think it says that I'm in Dora on that on my IMDb. That's pretty cool. I'm not in Dora. Mm. I think it's that not that what I'm, I heard. I've never been in a Dora. I think it Don't says tell that me I'm about Dora. The lead of Dune. Doris. On mine. Huh? Yeah. Well, I heard you were coming yeah, out I heard you Austin three. Butler. Yeah. And I, heard I think you're Austin my Butler. IMDb is Austin <laughs> Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin I am Austin Austin Butler. Dude, oh yeah, that's crazy. You must be really rich. Yeah, I am, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's crazy that you're not doing the Elvis yet. voice that you've been stuck in for two years that you won't stop doing. You know that? That he's been doing Elvis since he... Yeah. Did. yeah. Can we, we talk about it. that? As I yeah, dude, mic. if you could break the set, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, just to, so there's a brand new mic in the Yeah, these, uh, these mics that we got sponsored. Yeah, just break them. <laughs> Can we talk about him not well, coming out of character? I want to talk about this voice thing. Yep, Trump. Oh, this? <laughs> Oh, this thing? Austin Butler doesn't what really a talk guy. in an Elvis <laughs> accent. I'm telling you right now. I've talked to Melania about it. Talk to you about it. That's not bad. Talk That's one good. of the better ones that we've had on the show. Everybody's talking about it. <laughs> Listen to me. Excuse I'm me. telling you, China doesn't even know what they're talking about. I'm, I looked at Austin Butler. It's I said bad. to myself, Austin, if you don't... <laughs> kind of Dr. Evil. A little, a little, <laughs> yeah. bit, little bit Austin Powers, yeah. Have you seen, uh, have you seen the new Dune? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. I have not seen it's, it's either good. one. You should see it. Do you yeah, think well, the audience is just totally enthralled by this? I think they are. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a good time. Uh, Kevin, thank you for doing this, man. Yeah. Do you guys want me to sing a song? No. I yeah, think you're going to head out. <laughs> That's how we got the new mic. Oh, no. dude, it looks like we're out of time. You guys um, want to go see a movie after this? I just want to talk. I just want to talk shop. Yeah, we're going to actually going to cut on that one. But uh, thanks, Kevin. Give me a ride home. Please get rid of those car keys. Yeah. Just him and Live 10 minutes down the road. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in back there. You're like, nah, Jake's got me. We're good. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Thank you for coming on here. Thanks, Thanks for the last. Yeah, 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 Thanks for sharing. Enjoy laughing with it, you, it was real, but then we also laughed, and then it got real again, and then we laughed again. Well, I mean, we talked about that's, that's how you do a podcast. I mean, this is like, you guys are doing something right. Fuck. I mean, <laughs> 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 hey, we're um, known for that. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, all right. We'll check out Kevin's podcast. Check out Please. his new album. Um, I think I'm in Jake's shot right here. Hey. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're doing another one. <laughs> Come on in, brother. All right, dude. All thank right. you for doing this. I actually did see you yesterday. <laughs> Guess what? It's the outro. You're here. You're still here. Bradley's looking for a question, but I'd like to say uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for coming and talking to us. Uh, that was a really great story to uh share with us uh great story um it's definitely not easy to express that um especially to uh, an audience but it's great that he's doing a podcast and spreading awareness and um i guess i don't know if great's the word but i really appreciate him being vulnerable and sharing that and it's um, being candid i i, I think it was do. yeah i think it's great to have that type of material on, on a podcast too because it, it, it does tie in a lot to our industry as um we, we face a lot of different people and, and rejection and uh, a lot of crap that you, you kind of don't deal with because if you dwell on it, you, you miss out on opportunities and you don't have time to focus on what's really important, which is your job. But honestly, your me- mental health is probably the most important thing uh, in your career and your life and your, your future. Life. So, yeah. um, Mental yeah. health comes before your job. I'm glad sure. that he came on here to talk about that with us. I agree. I kind of wish I learn more about um his experience when we were on the channel together because i kind of want to talk about reminisce a little bit but um well we'll just have to have him come back on i guess so or you can just do that in the cooking show well the cooking show already happened i think i should be a co-host on your cooking show you don't have to pay me i'll just do it i would love for you to come back on but i require you not to speak at all 
<laughs> and you just I, I require food? Dennis to also dub my voice. I don't want him to speak for I me. I don't think the world wants that. The, world, the world's not ready for the voice the of world. Dennis. The world of not worthy. The world. Uh, do you want the question? Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> uh, do you want the question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who's it from? You want to know? Yeah. You want, really want to know? You don't know who it's from. I don't know who it's from because I already closed out the app, which is a bummer. But anyway, uh, if you could have anybody, any actor, play you in a movie about your life, who would it be? Man, I feel like you, I, it's a real bummer that you're not giving credit to who asked this question. Ah, it's, hold on. It's a good question. Um, if I could have any actor play me in a movie, uh, like a like a serious, like a, is it biopic or a biopic? Biopic. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Um, it I was think by it's biopic, Maeve, right? okay. 8029. Maeve. Um, I think Dennis and I agree it's biopic. Sure, whatever. Um, I, yeah, let's, let's, let's go to this guy for how to pronounce words, huh? That's, that's, that's definitely the dictionary over here. <laughs> okay, Guys so got 17 it, different accents going on and we're talking to him about it. Rules. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Not even from this continent, but somehow has an East Coast accent. I uh, argue that a lot of... A lot of foreign people are smarter than than some. Let's say he's not smarter, but we're just yeah. talking about our language. Anyway, shut up, Dennis. <laughs> um, is let's set some ground rules, real so quick. So, Maeve, is thank it, you, Maeve. Thanks, Maeve. <laughs> is it a serious film? Is it a comedy? And what would the title be? Um, is it serious? Is it a comedy? It's your life, dude. Your life's not very okay. Let's serious. make it a comedy. Yeah. Um, it's seriously, seriously comedic. Bad. Oh, damn. Uh, what's the title? <clears throat> Irrelevancy. <laughs> Starring Seth Green. <laughs> you want Seth Green to play yourself? 50-year-old Seth Green to play yeah, a 26-year-old so. guy? Yeah, it makes sense. Hey, your birthday's coming up, by the way. Uh, Charlie Day. I'd love to see Charlie Day play me. It'd be fun. Did your birthday already happen? No, it's in... I know. I'm it's coming up. Yeah. When's yours? November 24th or 22nd? Somewhere in between both of those <laughs> things. Um... You want Charlie Day? I think Charlie Day. That's a cool answer, actually. Um, yeah, but just because I feel like it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be Shawshank, man. I wanna, I wanna enjoy watching my, my uh, film about myself. God, he's funny too, ain't he? Yeah. Um, I think it'd be a fun one. I think and he's a good golfer. Yeah, he's a great golfer. Yeah. Oh, did you see the comment on our survey too? That was like Stop the golf talking talk. About golf. Yeah. <laughs> You know who you are. Golf that's talk. funny. You know who you are. Yeah. We saw it. Don't we think we that. didn't see it. And if you're Cut still out watching. Cut golf talk. Yeah. You know what? We're going to talk more about it now. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Whatever. Okay. We won't talk about it. Yeah. We're not going to talk about it because we we want you to listen. Okay, who's <laughs> yes, who's in your movie? Um, If I had to guess, I feel like they probably would cast The Rock. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Jason Momoa. Dude, I saw a guy jogging down the street in the way here. Right out here? The guy with the beard? Oh, fucking Holy huge, crap. dude. And I it wasn't know. like he was like, he was just shredded. And yat it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that same guy. That's weird. <laughs> Yatted? Like tatted up? Yeah. I don't think but he was tatted. Not like here, he wasn't tatted. No, he had sleeves. Oh, yeah. I really checked this guy out, I, I guess. I did, too. Yeah, Oof. I turned around. I looked at my. I rear, turned around rear, too. Rear. I got out of my car, saw him, paid the meter, and like knew he was coming up on my side. So I mainly because like, whenever you see that, it's always like, when someone has their shirt off, you're always like, oh, you shouldn't have your shirt off. Most like, of the time, yeah. Or like, it's like this guy, but it wasn't like no, he wasn't dude. like strutting. He was like working out. I, I would feel like never he had a jump wear a rope. shirt actually no. if I looked like him, dude. That guy was. Yeah, awesome. I thought about I love the whole him. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I dreamt about I him just a bit. started. Oh, wow, thank you. For so you want him up. to play you in the movie, right? Yeah, dude, I hope. Um, I feel like, honestly, mine would be a flash forward and Seth MacFarlane would pe- play me. I'd say, yeah, that's fitting. Yeah. Both um, comedies. Yeah, and, and my called, kind of vibe. Would just be called Family Guy? Yeah, I'm a family guy, man. Um, <clears throat> young Michael J. Fox, I feel like I could. That's a weird title. The movie's called Young Michael <laughs> yeah. J. Fox. I just got an email from Netflix. Young Michael J. Fox? Not good. It's bad. The Netflix email? Yeah, my rate went up. Anyway, oh, um, oh. yeah, I think like I, I like I could have done. I think like I could have done Back to the Future. You know, like that mm-hmm. kind of vibe. Or Ferris Bueller. Mm. 
Like Matthew I think, Broderick. Yeah, I think I like that was my kind of vibe, you know. Um, <clears throat> for your movie, for your biopic. Yeah, it, mine would be called Back to Ferris Bueller. Let's oh, go I back really to like Ferris that. Bueller. Yeah, I'd watch starring that. Seth MacFarlane and Matthew Broderick and Courtney Cox. <laughs> yeah, dude, sure, <laughs> sure she's great. awesome. Courtney Cox. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to give her credit because everybody, when you watch Friends, everybody gives Jen Ann. I mean, Jen Ann's the, she's the girl, right? She's the lady. I mean, she's like one of the most beautiful actresses to ever. She's the lady. What a beautiful woman. Um, wow. What a sight. I, I looked at her and I said, wow. Um, but Courtney Cox is gorgeous. Gorgeous. I, yeah. Dude, that first season of Friends. I they're mean, all oh, they're like, all they're all like 23, 24. I think they're like yeah, I, I saw something that was like they're supposed to be playing 25-year-olds. And then so by the end of it, they're 35 all getting married and having kids and that's the end of the show. And so it was like, don't stress, man. Don't stress. Your life is okay. And you know what this feels like right now? Therapy? It feels like there was a comment in that thing that also said you guys should talk longer and that feels like what we're doing right now. Yeah, I feel like we're overdoing it. I got to go to bowling, so let's go. Yeah, I got to go pack because we leave in the morning. Oh, my God. Dude, you got to go to bed early. I'm not going to get any sleep before this This flight. guy, I'm this guy, this fucking guy, I'm talking to you now. This fucking guy books a 5 a.m. flight. Guy. Yeah? Just books it. We're supposed to fly there together, and I was like, not going to happen. Never going to happen. Out of LAX. For those watching from L.A., bada, 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 get a load of this guy. The guy didn't want to fly out of fucking Burbank at 9 o'clock. There's my Dennis impression. Let's get his opinion Dude, on how Boston, to say Boston, New words. York. It's crazy. Um, I'm Dennis. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you next week, guys.